for supremacism, which I cannot mention on this program? Are you telling me that Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg don't utter other types of supremacism behind closed doors as they mock you? Are you telling me that there's no supremacism amongst the nation of Islam? There's no supremacism amongst uh, la raza, which means the race. I've called it brown su supremacism for years. There's supremacists amongst all races, creeds, and religions. So don't focus only on the white sheets. Uh, th there's a rainbow of colors of supremacist sheets. <laughs> so I say we need to encourage the synagogue jesters and others in Hollywood to start putting out the propaganda before it's too late. And I say putting out the propaganda, I mean stop the propaganda against Christians. Stop the damn propaganda against the family. Stop the damn propaganda against the military. Harvey, stop the damn propaganda against everything decent in this nation, Harvey. Because those who sow the wind shall reap the whirlwind. I warn all of you, your day will come. The people know who you are. If you think you're going to skate forever, you're wrong. This country is melting down so rapidly. Tomorrow, no one knows what will come. The people are ready to blow. This country is ready to blow like a well. It's ready to blow like a well and spew black oil across the plains. It can't take another day of the filth put out by Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Harvey. It can't take another minute of Saturday Night Live mocking everything decent and supporting everything evil. It can't take it anymore. Its guts are in turmoil. It's ready to vomit out this filth. 21 years I have spent trying to warn you about these days, these days that we're living in now. 21 years! God has brought me to this place, to this microphone, to this day, for this message. Go ahead and mock it if you want. But you know in your hearts I'm telling you the truth. You know what's coming. I'm going to take a quick rest and be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. <laughs> Winston Churchill said, if you will not fight for right when you can easily win without bloodshed, if you will not fight when your victory is sure and not too costly, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. There may even be a worse case. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory because it is better to perish than to live as a slave. Do you understand the times you're living in? Do you understand the word Islamophobia is a word created by pro-Muslim terrorists and the progressives in the mainstream media? It was not Christians or Jews who blew up the barracks in Lebanon. It was not Christians or Jews who killed the Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics. It was not Christians or Jews who blew up the apartments in Saudi Arabia. It was not Christians or Jews who bombed the USS Cole. It was not Christians or Jews who blew up the American Embassy in Kenya. It was not Christians or Jews who blew up the 747 in Lockerbie. It was not Christians or Jews who attacked the USO in Germany. It was not Christians or Jews who created 9-11. It was not Christians or Jews who blew up the subway in England. It was not Christians or Jews who set off two bombs at the Boston Marathon. It was not Christians or Jews who murdered 14 soldiers at Fort Hood and murdered five soldiers in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm not even listing the multiple beheadings of non-believers and the rape and the torture of women in Africa by Boko Haram. Let's talk about Islamophobia another time. Let's talk about survival of the fittest. And let's talk about ISIS, a nuclearized Iran by Hussein, the conflict created by Obama with Russia, the global immigration crisis. I predicted it all, and I'm telling you that you can fight back. It's our last shot. This radio show, daily, Government Zero, a document of what I'm talking about, but in great detail. I'm trying to warn you about the barbaric third world invasion. I'm warning you about unchecked government power and re zero representation. And how they threaten our most fundamental 
freedoms and survival itself. Uh, I've been warning you for decades about unregulated immigration, radical Islamic terrorism, and the progressive agenda to destroy American culture. I know my voice is finally being heard as Donald Trump and other politicians belatedly acknowledge my warning, which is that America's borders, language, and culture are under attack and there is no time to lose. I hear it coming. But in my new book, out next week, I sound the alarm on progressives and radical Islamists unwittingly working towards similar ends, which is to destroy our civilization and remake it in their own respective images. There has been and is an all-out assault on basic freedoms, which aim to destroy our once free republic into a socialist, third world dictatorship ruled by government zero. Absolute government and zero representation. I admit I have an in-your-face style, which is no longer politically acceptable. I understand that people are offended by an in-your-face style in this age of liars and lies. I get it. But if these radicals who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education are not attacked forcefully as they flood uh, America with illegal immigrants, as they stifle free speech with hatred called political correctness, while turning a blind eye to the global threat of radical Islam, the progressives will destroy all of us, just as they've destroyed themselves. I rest my case. I'm Michael, Government Zero Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Why we're talking about this? Why we're talking about this? How the media covers, for example, Bernie Sanders' dangerous Soviet-era economics by mocking him about his underwear. This is the greatest uh, charade in the world. This is how they work. This is how the Larry Davids of the world have gotten where they are. They're geniuses. They're masters at mocking everything good and covering up the pure evil in the left. Notice that how they attacked Hillary Clinton on Saturday Night Live had nothing to do with the fact that she was the chief architect of the destruction of Libya, which has caused this massive ref refugee crisis that the Europe is being flooded with. Never forget that there's a reason they're not mocking her policies. They're not mocking the pantsuit, the light stuff. This is how the geniuses in the media operate. They distract you. They, they, they turn your eyes towards the insignificant. Remember that Gaddafi in Libya, as vicious as he was towards his Muslim countrymen, he subdued both the Sanusia Sufi religious order of ousted King Mohammed Idris and the Libyan chapter of the Muslim Brotherhood. He killed them. Did you know that? This evil, evil Gaddafi, the one that we killed or let be killed, you know, you hear about Benghazi. The hearings are coming up this Thursday. This is so big, it's beyond belief. How we destroyed Libya, how we created this refugee crisis that's flooding Europe. It was all Hillary Clinton, and it never comes up in any of the, any of the uh, any of the debates. And you're going to expect it from Anderson Cooper. You expect Mr. Uh, Anderson Cooper to bring that up? That's so beyond his pay level. He couldn't even understand it if you spelled it out for him. If you put it on a Monopoly board or a follow the dots, let's put it that way. If you gave Anderson Cooper a Follow the Dots coloring book and showed him this with a coloring book and a pack of Crayola, he couldn't understand it. He's a pretty boy. He's Ronan Farrow with a different set of eyeglasses. It was Hillary who brought down Gaddafi, who had suppressed all the Islamists in Libya, kept them under control. And Obama and Hillary in their adventure in deposing Gaddafi and embracing the opposition, they did not know what hell they would unleash. Gaddafi warned them, same in Syria, in their attempts to bring down Assad, who Russia is supporting, the very same elements would rise up in Syria and then have chemical weapons. God knows what else they would grab from uh, the Syrian arsenal. You get it? So maybe this is too much for right now. For a Monday, I get it. Baseball, football, this ball, that ball, basketball, all aboard. Follow the bouncing ball, boys and girls. Follow the bouncing ball. Eat your GMOs. Take your Prozac. And then run at night. Waste your whole night having sex with multiple partners using drugs. And then in the morning take a, a, a green, take a, a, a cleansing juice. Yeah, that's the American way. All night long live like a, a degenerate slut from the lowest... 
lowest level of Hades, and then in the morning have a cleansing juice and say you're a vegan. Oh, no, no, I don't eat, uh, I don't touch meat. Oh, no, 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 I don't eat that. No, no, no. See, that's, that's the death of a nation. They're focused on the wrong things. The soul is dead. And I think I've done enough for this. 90 straight minutes, not a phone call, not an interruption. Unbelievable electricity. Because we're at the end of it, end of the road. When I see what's going on in Europe, when I see what Europe is facing, and I see Hussein getting away with saying he's going to bring in 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 Syrians, and nobody stops Hussein, I realize that we all have to stand up and say enough is enough. We need to build razor wire around ourselves in order to protect ourselves from what this man is trying to do to this country. You may as well put razor wire around your house for what this guy is trying to do to this country. Forget Europe, because it's coming here. Put razor wire around Hollywood. Then maybe all of the guys with the Larry David mentality, the synagogue jesters, can c continue to bop around Sunset Boulevard like they're gods themselves, and nothing can touch them. Because nothing's ever touched them. They're above it all, aren't they? Okay, I haven't taken a call. I owe it to you. It's a talk show. I've given enough of myself for the moment. But I'm really feeling myself warming up to the task the closer I get to the day I'm going to ask you, my army, to go out to the bookstores and clean the shelves out. Again, I don't need a new car. I don't need a beach house. I have both. I, I don't need them. I have both. I don't need them. I did this for one reason only. To, to save the country. Laugh if you want, it doesn't matter. You can be as cynical as I am. I don't blame you for being cynical. Everyone's a liar, everyone's selling something. Okay, fine. I want you to buy a copy of the book for your friend, your neighbor, your wife, your husband, your brother-in-law, your Bernie Sanders brother-in-law. The type that comes to your house that you can't stand. The type who grabs your lapel with one hand, pokes you in the chest with the other, and spritzes you with spittle lecturing you about the, the wonders of progressivism and income inequality and how unfair it all is. You know the type, the type you all hate. And that cuts across all ethnic groups. Bernie is an example of your uncle, your, your disaster of an uncle. Let's go to the callers. Alan, WABC in New York, thank you for calling. What's your comment, please? Several years ago, Dr. Savage, you recommended that we watch uh, a great movie uh, with Anthony Quinn and Rod Steiger. Remember the line of the desert and how that ended? You set us up for it. Uh, it's perpetual. Do you remember that when Mullah Omar gets hung at the end? And he gave a great monologue on it. I remember the movie, The Lion, I think it's The Lion of what? Something. Lion of the Desert. And it was on and I watched it and it's ironic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Anthony Quinn, one of his greatest roles. He plays a Muslim tribal leader. And as they're about to hang him, he's not frightened. But what does he say? I can't hear you. He says, he says at the end, as they're killing him, you're killing me, but you're not killing my son and his son. And in other words, it's perpetual. And that's what you're painting for. Uh, 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 that is right. And the jihad is on. They are here. They're near. They're everywhere. And Hussein wants to bring in 200,000 of them. The brown shirts like us in Hollywood. Why would a sane nation bring in jihadists? I'm a now, Hussein, Hussein in the White House would argue that they're not. Hussein would say that these are just simple refugees who are just like your ancestors who deserve a new, a new fresh start in life. And then the next day, out of one of Hussein's lieutenant's mouths comes the word, we don't know who they are. The head of the FBI said we can't vet them. We have no idea which one of them are jihadists. So who are you going to believe, Hussein or the head of the FBI? I'm going to believe you. Hey, look, my friend, I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero. It's still legal. It's still legal. I can guarantee you as I stand here, I can swear to you, I'll stare. I have a Bible right here. See, I have a copy of the Old Testament in English that I keep. People who know me know it's the, the, uh, the truth. Right here, my, my right hand. It has maybe 300 post-its in it. There are so many post-its in my Bible, which I'm holding up to my Skype screen. Robert, yes or no? You can't even see where the pages are anymore. There's too many post-its now to even find anything. I found too many quotes. I'm not a particularly religious man, but I read the Bible in another context sometimes. I just swear on this Bible that I'm telling you the truth, the emiss, on what's going on. And we're down to the wire. Unless Hussein is stopped... 
Unless Hussein, a million of us say no.